Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance have a tour review today for the Capri Tools 10 to 50 inch pound torque screwdriver set. I don't typically use a torque screwdriver very often in my line of work, or I haven't in the past at least. However, with the new electrical codes and the things where we're supposed to be setting all our uh, connections for receptacles and switches and breakers and in the panel and things like that, we're supposed to be setting those to a certain torque value based on that manufacturer's spec. These should be tools that you should start seeing more often on the job site. Uh, however, if I'm honest with you, at least in my area, I've yet to see electricians or anybody doing electrical work whip out a torque screwdriver to install things like receptacles and switches. However, that's what we should be doing. You should have the right tool to do so. Uh, so I, I started looking into these because I needed to get one. And in my last work order video where I had that microwave tripping the breaker, got out to that panel, we found those burnt wires. Uh, whether it was from a loose connection or not, unsure, the damage was already to a point where it's kind of hard to 100% tell. But in, in those comments, Stan Rosenblum mentioned what he would do is take his Weha insulated torque screwdriver and go down each breaker and just double check and make sure all of them are set to value. So that's what I'm going to do with this tool after I talk about its features. We'll go out to that same exact panel. I'm gonna go down some of those breakers. We're gonna check those connections, see if they're set to the value that they should be. That, that panel was installed a little over a year ago. Now, whether or not the connections were made with the torque screwdriver by hand, I'm not sure. I'm not the one who installed it, but it'd be interesting to see. When we use a calibrated instrument like this, how many of those breakers are torqued to the value that they should be. Now, of course, they could have loosened up over the last little bit, but again, it's just going to be interesting to see. Now, he mentioned using his Weha insulated torque screwdriver, and I'm looking into buying that one as well, and I think I probably will eventually, but I wanted to go ahead and get uh, this one because of some of the features that I saw on it. And also the fact that I think to me, if I'm going to spend that $300 for an insulated torque screwdriver set, I'm only going to use that one in the places where I need it to be an insulated tool. I'm not going to need that for installing receptacles and switches on circuits that aren't live. I don't want to give the wear and tear on that tool uh, whenever I can use something like this. So I decided I'd go with this one first because I actually prefer some of the features on this tool in comparison to that Weha, as far as, again, I don't have it in my hands, but some of the features that I read about that and the other torque screwdrivers that I looked at, I'm actually kind of surprised how few options there are for to torque screwdrivers as far as for the name brands, but especially also for the insulated torque screwdrivers, very few options for that. So I purchased this one. I also have a, a Vera 11 to 29 inch pounds that I got a phenomenal deal for on eBay. It's coming in the mail soon uh, that I'm going to use that actually now that I purchased it for installing my receptacles and switches because that inch pounds of 11 to 29 is going to work well for that. And I'm just going to keep that one in my tool bag uh, because I'm going to be more apt to use it if it's with me than if, if it's in my truck or something like that to just do some quick job. But here are the features that I like about this in comparison to some of the other ones that I looked at. Now, this one does come with your certificate of compliance or your calibration, you know, certificate. So if your inspector asks for that, but I really like the fact that this changes in one inch increments and I don't have to have any other tool to change the calibrations. Uh, that Weha in particular, you have to have a whole nother tool that you stick into your screwdriver to adjust the torque value. Several other ones I looked at, they had a tool, maybe an Allen wrench or something that was built onto the screwdriver that you pulled out and you had to get that out to do that. Changing the torque value on this screwdriver in particular couldn't be easier. You can see it goes from 10 to 50 inch pounds. Right now I'm on 14, but all you do is you pull back on this and then you turn your handle. So it goes down to 10 and then 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on. And then once you get to nine, it goes back to zero, which that makes you be on 20. And then it goes up 10 more to 30 and so on until you get to 50. Couldn't be easier, you know, to adjust. You don't have to have any special tools or anything like that. Big feature for me, I think, on this one. Feels great in your hand. It's got a nice weight to it. This doesn't feel like a gimmicky tool to me. I, I haven't heard of this brand of tools before. 
uh, but it doesn't feel like it's a lightweight, cheap tool. It feels good. It's got really good reviews. There's a lot of people out there that really like it. Another thing that it has is on the back, they give you this T-handle so that if you need to gain more leverage, maybe if you're getting up in that 50 inch pound area, you can use that to help get you to that point. Also, what you can do is you can take a quarter inch ratchet and put it in there as well. That's fits in there the same. That's probably what I would end up using most of the time just because it feels more comfortable. Another reason why I got this one was that it takes any quarter inch bit so I can take and put you know, my slotted square in there, my combination bits, use those on my receptacles and breakers and things like that if I need to. And if I'm gonna be using this in that way, it doesn't matter if I tear up this bit because I can easily replace it. So if I buy that Weeha set, it comes with insulated blades. Well, if those blades get damaged, it's a whole lot harder to replace those blades. It's more expensive. All the things that come along with that. So I would like to still buy that set, but I would still want a set like this as well, just to use as the, the daily user that you're gonna you know do the grunt work with. And I'm gonna use that more expensive tool for the times when I need that insulation value. So again, this is still a great purchase, I think, for me to start out with, but I still will probably get an insulated tool set. The one thing I did notice is the bit release. You gotta be a little bit careful with it. Uh, the bits kind of fly out a little bit. I don't like that as well. Uh, so you gotta make sure that you're willing to catch your bit before you release it. Now, one thing that I do have, and it's a suggestion anyways, is that Crescent Apex makes these insulated uh, impact rated driver bits that you can put basically between your impact and the place that you're uh, working on. You could put that in here and give you a little bit of an insulation value between yourself and the work that you're doing. It's only really going to protect if you touch something to this and it's gonna keep it from coming back on you. You know, you're still not protected from this point back. So if you're working in a panel uh, and you have the op opportunity to maybe touch something with the rest of the screwdriver, this is not gonna do you any good. But if you're working on something, you just want that little bit of protection maybe, or you wanna feel a little bit safer, you could use something like this in there. And I, I have tried it and it doesn't change as far as the torque value settings. If I, if I tighten it with this and then take it out and put the bit directly in here, it tightens up at the same exact thing. So the adapter itself doesn't change the torque value. So if I set the torque value to 14, which is what it's supposed to be for this Leviton plug or receptacle, and I put that in, you'll see that as I get to that 14, I get a slip. The screwdriver handle itself keeps turning, but the bit does not. And best I can tell or explain to you is that feeling is more of like a strip screw or your screwdriver head being, you know, worn out. That's the same exact feel that you have, except for you are actually not slipping on the screw itself. That bit does not move, but that's kind of the feel that you get. You don't get an audible, you know, click with it like what you might with a, a ratchet in your garage or something like that. You don't get that sound, but you get that slippage to know that you're at whatever that particular value is. So let's go to that panel. Let's do the same thing. Let's check out several of them breakers and, and see what that looks like as we get into it. All right, guys, so I have 21 total, 15 or 20 amp breakers in this panel. Anything from 10 to 20 from this manufacturer, Square D, it says that the recommended rating is 36 inch pounds. You can actually see that on the side of one of these breakers as well. I'm gonna just go down these top four and just show you those, but I'm gonna go ahead and check all of them and I'll tell you how many of them uh, are loose or aren't to spec. And again, there might be some of these that are over torqued. I wouldn't be able to check that, but I can check and see where we're at as far as under torqued. So if I start up here at the top, I didn't get any extra turn on that before the torque wrench slipped. Here's the one that I changed out uh, with the microwave. I tightened it by hand. No extra turn on that. Next one down. I'm getting a slight turn on that. I probably had a quarter turn. 
another quarter turn and now it broke so see that one was significantly loose in, in my opinion as far as not to spec i don't know if i would have felt it by hand if i would have done it again i'm not the one who installed this panel next one down getting a little bit and now now it broke free so again that's two out of four that needed a little bit more tightening up i'm going to go ahead and tighten up the rest and we'll see total i'll let you know how many i had so in going over 21 breakers i had four breakers that i probably would say I, I turned significantly you know more than a quarter of a turn in order to get those to that 36 inch pounds i had maybe two more of those that were just very slightly tightened up before the torque wrench said that i was at the 36 inch pounds so again it's important or at least to me it brings me more comfort knowing that i have my wires clamped have the right clamping pressure and all those sorts of things according to what the manufacturer who's going to know more than me about this sort of thing where they need to be and maybe that's what caused the issue with this wire with that microwave was a loose connection caused that wire to wilt, melt and then caused me to have to change that out so yeah that's the capri tools precision torque screwdriver set again i'll put a link in the description 125 dollars on amazon uh, it seems like a lot of money for a screwdriver, but if you get into looking at these torque screwdrivers, there's none of them that are very cheap. Uh, but maybe y'all have got some, uh, especially if you've got some insulated ones that you've got an opinion on. I'd like to hear about that down below. Uh, I'm leaning towards buying that Weha set, but maybe you've got another set that you think that I should look at. Uh, make sure and share that with me in the comments. If you've got this tool and you're just watching this video to see what I thought about it, let me know what you think about it. I'm interested to hear that as well. Hope that this was interesting. Hope that it was helpful. You guys stay safe. Have a blessed day and I'll see you on the next video.